And this week's Sedger has Sedger's told us. Modern culture says that at 40, you're over the hill. While in the Mishnah, Yehuda ben Tema taught that at the age of 40, one hits wisdom. People who have turned 40 can relate to both descriptions of their, this age. On the one hand, you begin to feel your age. You're not able to move with as much agility, run as fast, and your energy begins to wane. At the same time, you understand more about life, the areas you've studied solidify, and you begin to apply your knowledge to different parts of your life. 40 isn't the time most would list as ideal to getting married. Nothing wrong, but not ideal. But in this week's Torah portion, Esau marries at 40, and the Torah makes a point of mentioning his age. As we read in this week's Torah portion, when Esau was 40 years old, he married Judith, the daughter of Biri the Chiti, and Basmat, the daughter of Elon the Chiti. And they were a source of bitterness, both to Yitzchak and Rivka, his parents. Our Torah, Torah scholars debate why the Torah made a point of mentioning Esau's age. In his commentary, Rashi wrote that Esau is compared to a boar. As it said, the boar, when it lies down, stretches its cloven hoof, and it's much to say, see, I'm kosher. When in reality, it is not a kosher animal. In the same way, Esau robbed and exhorted and pretended to be honorable. For his whole 40 years, Esau enticed women from their husbands and mistreated them. When he reached the age of 40, he said, My father took a wife when he was 40, and I shall do the same. Rashi saw the listing of Esau's age as a praise for Esau, showing how he changed his ways. The Radak wrote a bit differently. He said the reason why he did not marry until he was 40 years of age was that he wanted to emulate his father, who had married at the age of 40. He wanted to create the impression that he was walking in the footsteps of his father. However, he did not observe his father's ways, who had not been allowed to marry a woman of Canaanite descent. In that respect, he followed his eyes, judging by external appearances and ancestry, not personal virtues. He had not bothered to consult with his father. Radak was focusing on Ace of wanting to be like his father, but only in the areas he found appealing, like the amount of years, but completely ignored his father when it came to the character of his wives. The Sforno took the listing of Esau's age and it took a different approach and wrote this point. Yitzchak was 100 years old at this, when Esau married and he did not bother to see it that both his sons should be provided with suitable wives. As a result, his wives were a source of bitterness to his parents, Yitzchak and Rivka. Sforno understood the listing of Esau's age was to tell about Yitzchak and how he didn't make sure his son Esau had a proper wife. Now we've seen three different explanations about why Hashem listed Esau's age when he was married. Rashi saw the listing of Esau's age as a praise for Esau, showing how he changed his ways. Radak was focusing on Esau's wanting to be like his father, but only in the areas he found appealing, like the amount of years, completely ignored his father when it came to the character of his, of his wives. And Sforno understood the listing of Esau's age was to tell about Yitzchak, and when he didn't make sure Esau had a proper wife. The difference between these three opinions is putting Esau's marriage into context. Esau's marriage could be seen as a reflection of Esau's start of repentance, it's Rashi's opinion, or Esau's lack of discipline, that was the Radak, or Yitzchak's laxity in ensuring a proper wife for Esau, that was the Sforno's opinion. Three different looks at how, why Esau's age was listed as 40 in the Torah when he got married, and why that's so important for us, because it teaches us so much about Esau's approach to life and probably how we shouldn't emulate it. Shabbat Shalom.